Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about redox half reactions. And so what is a redox half reaction? Well it says right here that a redox half reaction tells the full story of what is taking place in a redox reaction. And it's going to show in a separate chemical equation what is taking place to the element that is being oxidized and it shows in a separate chemical equation what is taking place to the element that is being reduced. So let's suppose we have a chemical reaction where we have sodium reacting with chlorine gas to produce sodium chloride. And in an earlier video, we learned how to determine uh, whether or not the elements in this compound are being oxidized or reduced, right? We said that sodium is elemental sodium here and therefore its oxidation state is zero. Also, if we take a look right here, chlorine or Cl2 is elemental chlorine and its oxidation state is also zero. However, if we take a look on the product side, we have sodium chloride and sodium when it's in a compound forms a positive one oxidation state and chlorine when it's in a compound forms a minus one oxidation state. So if we take a look here, we have sodium, right? that is going from an oxi oxidation state of zero to an oxidation state of plus one. So what must this sodium uh, metal do? Well, it's going to have to lose an electron to form a positive one over here. And so because sodium is losing an electron, sodium is being oxidized right it's being oxidized and if we take a look at what's happening to chlorine chlorine is or has an oxidation state that is zero here and is negative one on the product side so what must this chlorine do to go from a zero oxidation state to a negative one oxidation state well it's going to have to gain an electron and so chlorine here is reduced or there is reduction that is taking place okay so if we take a look at it this way, our sodium is being oxidized and our chlorine is being reduced during this chemical reaction right here. So what we can write from this are two different half reactions that explain the whole story that is taking place right here. We can write a half reaction for the oxidation of sodium. And we can also write a half reaction for the reduction of chlorine, right? We can write a, re a half reaction for the reduction of our chlorine here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see what is taking place to our sodium. If we take a look at sodium, we have sodium or simply Na and we're going to go ahead and ignore the coefficients when we're writing our half reactions for now. So we have sodium which is Na and it has no charge at all and what or has a zero oxidation state and what it ends up producing over here is a sodium with an oxidation state of plus one. So what must this sodium do in order to go from uh, having a zero oxidation state to a plus one oxidation state, well, it's going to have to lose an electron. It's going to have to lose one little electron, right? However, when we write a half reaction for, an ox uh, for oxidation, we can't have negatives in our chemical equations. So if we add E to this side and we add E to this side, Right? If we add an E minus here and we add an E minus here, what we'll end up with is our oxidation half reaction for sodium. Right, We'll end up with sodium that has uh, an oxidation state that is zero or a neutral sodium atom turning into sodium with a plus one oxidation and this little electron right here. So this will end up being sodium's half reaction, right? The oxidation half reaction for sodium is right here, right? If we take a look, neutral sodium is turning into a sodium plus one ion, 
and it's also doing so by losing an electron, right? That is oxidation. So oxidation half reactions are going to have our electrons on the product side of our chemical reaction equation. So one way that we can spot an oxidation reaction is by taking a look, or half reaction is by taking a look and seeing that our electron here is on our product side. Let's see what's happening now over here with our chlorine. If we take a look at our chlorine, we have chlorine, which is Cl2. And each one of these chlorines is going to gain an electron as it produces Cl- minus over here. But if we take a look here, we have two Cl minuses, right? So Cl2 is going to end up gaining two electrons. And in doing so, this is going to end up producing two Cl minus one over here. Or simply put, we can get rid of this one if we'd like. However, understand that concept because we have the coefficient two here it's going to end up producing two chloride ions. So the reduction half reaction for chlorine is going to look like this right here. Cl2 is going to gain two electrons and produce two chloride ions over here. And we can typically spot a reduction half reaction whenever we notice the electrons in our chemical half reaction on the reactant side. We can see right here that our electrons are on our reactant side. Of our chemical reaction equation. And therefore this is going to be a reduction half reaction for chlorine. And together these two reactions. Is what is producing or, or, or is what is being seen right here right these two together will end up creating this entire reaction that we see right here this entire redox reaction so understand what's happening understand what is going on in a redox reaction there's two separate reactions that are taking place one of the elements is being oxidized one is being reduced and from that we can create two different half reactions that show the oxidation of one of the elements and the reduction of another element. So let's take a look at another example. In this second example it says to write the redox half reactions for the following reactions. So we have what appears to be a single replacement reaction here and we know that single replacement reactions are always going to be redox reactions. So we have two moles of aluminum reacting with three moles of copper to sulfate and this is going to produce three moles of copper and one mole of aluminum sulfate and so we have to write the uh, the redox half reaction so we have to write the half reaction for the oxidation of one of these elements that is taking place and we have to write the half reaction for the reduction of one of these elements that is taking place. And so the first thing that we can see here is that we have sulfate, right? The polyatomic ion sulfate right here. And we also have that right here. So we have sulfate on the reactant side and it's remaining unchanged. We have sulfate on the product side. And so because we have both of these polyatomic ions on the product side and the reactant side, neither oxidation or reduction is happening to them and so we can end up not even uh, talking about them when we decide to write a half reaction. So we're going to leave these out of our discussion and we're going to focus on the other elements and what is happening to them and uh, generate some oxidation half reactions and reduction half reaction for these. So if we take a look here we have elemental aluminum and all elements have an oxidation state of zero. We do know, however, that sulfate, this polyatomic ion right here, has a negative two charge. And if this has a negative two charge and it's bonded to copper, remember that positive ions and negative ions, when they're bonded to one another, 
the sum of their oxidation states ends up being zero. So if this has a negative two charge here, then that must mean that the oxidation state of this copper right here is a positive two charge. If we take a look over here at copper, it is now elemental copper and therefore its oxidation state is zero. And if we take a look over here, we have three sulfates, three sulfates, and we know that sulfate has a negative two charge and three times negative two is negative six. So what must that make the aluminum oxidation state B? Well, two times what number will give us a positive six? Well, the oxidation state here for aluminum must be a positive three because once again, as we er learned earlier uh, or in an earlier video, the charges of these elements in this ionic compound here must always equal zero. So we know that sulfate is minus two. We have three of them, so three times negative two is negative six. We have two aluminums here, so two times what number must give us positive six? Well, the oxidation state here is going to be positive three. And so now that we've figured that out, what we can now do is we can now see which of these atoms is being oxidized and which of these is being reduced. So if we take a look at aluminum, right? Aluminum on our reactant side has an oxidation state of zero. And if we take a look, what's happening to it? Well, aluminum is turning into an oxidation state of plus three. So what must happen in order for aluminum to go from an oxidation state of zero to an oxidation state of plus three is that it's going to have to end up losing electrons, right? It's gonna end up losing electrons. Electrons are negative, and if you lose something negative, you're gonna become more positive. And if you remember oil rig and Leo goes Ger, then we know that when we lose electrons, that is called oxidation. So we know that aluminum is being oxidized here. Let's now take a look at what is happening to copper. If we take a look at our copper here on the reactant side, its oxidation state is a plus two. And over here, the oxidation state is zero. So what must happen for this copper here to go from plus two to zero? Well, it looks like it's going to have to gain electrons, right? And we know that whenever an atom gains electrons or one or more electrons, that is called reduction. And so now that we've figured out which atoms are being reduced and which are being oxidized, we can now write the oxidation half reaction and the reduction half reaction for this redox reaction right here. So if we take a look at our oxidation, our aluminum here is starting off with an oxidation of zero. And so what must happen? What must happen for this aluminum here to go to a plus three over here? Well, it's going to have to lose three electrons right? It's going to have to lose three electrons to produce Al plus three. And so this right here is going to end up being our oxidation half reaction for aluminum. And keep in mind that whenever we have the electrons on the right hand side of our half reaction, that is going to be able to be determined as oxidation and so that's what's taking place. We have our oxidation half reaction right here, and we can even write this as simply Al going to Al plus three plus three electrons as our oxidation half reaction. Let's take a look over here at our reduction. We know that copper initially starts with an oxidation state of Cu2 plus, what's going to end up happening to this copper? Well, it's going to have to gain, it's going to have to gain two electrons to become our copper metal that has an oxidation state of zero, right? And so we can end up writing this like this below.
oops, we could put a plus two here for copper and our copper metal, we can go ahead and leave this charge off. All right, so we can see that this copper two plus ion here is going to have to gain two electrons as it produces our copper metal over here that has an oxidation state of zero. Okay, so that's what's happening. We have our half reaction for the oxidation of aluminum right here, and we have our half reaction for the reduction of copper right here. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.